Well, number seven, Maxime Vacher Le Grav won in convincing style against Irene Sukander. He joins us to tell us what happened in his game. Maxime, a good round one result, a victory against Irene Sukander, but the game itself was also quite exciting. Um, yeah, it didn't go the way I planned it in the opening because uh, I had from the very beginning to calculate quite long and uh, difficult lines where things could go easily wrong for me, so this was not the plan today, but I'm glad that uh, in this way I'm, I warmed up uh, really well for, for the tournament. And here we've got the system where at the opening ceremony the top seeds pull out their opponents pretty much randomly. What was your feeling uh, when you got to know that you're playing Irene? You know, it's, uh, it's business. Uh, <laughs> as usual. As usual. But uh, yeah, I was expecting an, an exciting game. Uh, and uh, by no means uh, are the players from 1-1 one, one pushovers clearly, I mean... Some, some of us are suffering quite a lot, and I was included in that lot. <laughs> and now we see you come back to Gibraltar year and year again. What keeps you coming back here? Uh, it's all good fun, I think. Uh, of course, it's uh, also a bonus that I get to, to meet uh, with a lot of French guys, because uh, in my usual tournaments, I don't get to see them as often. And also a lot of, um, of people that I don't have the luxury of seeing, so I think... Uh, and the tournament is anyway incredibly strong, so I think it's uh, it's good for me to be able to to meet some people that uh, otherwise uh, I don't get to meet. And uh, the atmosphere here is quite special. Now, Maxime, especially in 2019, with the absolute insane calendar that the top players had, you guys were facing each other a lot all the time throughout the year. So, is it a good change to play people you don't often meet over the chessboard? Uh, that as well. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, 2019 was uh, very exciting in a way. I mean, it was a uh, really big experience for me to get to play uh, almost every day for like the last six months. Um, I got some rest. I'm ready to, to come back after a disappointing end of the year. And uh, I hope that Gibraltar will, will be a first uh, milestone to redemption. <laughs> Oh, we're very excited to have you here, and you had a good start. Where do you think it went wrong for Black here? Um, so, what? Um, let me try and do it for you. Okay. Okay. This is yes. Yeah. Um, so I went F four, and I'm not sure about it because it uh, got the game very, very complicated. At the same time, if I didn't go for f4, if I wasn't sure what I was planning to do. According to our base, in fact, it's a new move here. Yeah, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> and I missed this idea with queen b6, and that after e5, she has knight d7. Yes. And how were you planning to defend the e5 pawn? I was not planning. <laughs> so knight d5, queen c5, c4. Can black just take on e5? Uh, yeah, she can, then I take, and after knight e5, I go something like bishop e3. I thought there's a lot of counterplays for the knight b5, queen d6 doesn't help because knight b5. And this pin is extremely relevant. So you've got knight c7 coming uh, in. Because after c4, at first, I planned, I rejected it on account of e6. And then it turns out that this is very good for me because of b4, queen takes e4, knight e3, queen c7. And just when it seems to come to an end, I have knight b5. Again, utilizing the pin on the a5. Yeah, and it doesn't stop here, but after rook a8, she cannot go knight b6 because I take on d6, and if d takes e5, rook c1, and I'm getting this bishop. Um, so yeah, this is what I had to calculate. This was just 20 minutes. Yeah, you took a while here. <laughs> yeah, and I was very surprised that she went knight h5. Um, yeah, also, of course, I mean, I have another move, but sadly it's not enough. So, hook d1, e5, take, <coughs> take queen f2, pawn takes d4, knight d5. But here, sadly, there's a move queen e6. It's very important to bring the queen to e6 because it protects f7. So you don't 
Uh, you're not afraid because otherwise I'll missing? text D4. Queen D6 will text D4, and I'm getting this knight. And what's happening after knight C7 now? Yeah, queen E4 or something. Okay, and you yeah. just play this position. Yeah, yeah. No, I have to. You have to for take this him. And uh, I mean, I might be worse simply. So, um, but knight H5 was a very pleasant surprise because. I mean, after this move, she defended very well, but uh, my play is suddenly much easier. Um, I went g4 because anyway she, she's going to go bishop g7, and um, it's the only move, otherwise uh, uh, she loses. Like, the point is after pawn takes, pawn takes. No, my bishop controls uh, the queen. If she goes rook t8, I think my plan was something like... Um, Many moves here Can because you something like Pontex, Pontex E5 is not that clear. Um, I think I actually wanted F5. Yep. And I think that should be winning. Uh, so if you take Bishop uh, no, E5, you've got. No, Bishop E5. Yeah, 96. And you've got the Bishop. No, wait, that, back? No, that was not so clear. Um, so that was not my plan. Can you go Knight F5? Oh, Knight uh, F5? Yeah, actually, Knight F5. Five is a move, but queen takes, knight takes, it's not and so clear. But then you get f5, no? Um, Just let's have it on the board. So something like this? Yeah, no, this is, of course, probably very good. Um, but I think there was something more forcing. Mm. So uh, I don't remember exactly, but... Uh, she actually went bishop g7, which is a... Yeah, yeah, bishop g7 is the right move anyway. So take, take, f5, bishop g7, knight d5, queen c5. C4, and here she surprised me again with this move. Bishop C6, which is probably a very good try. And um, yeah, at first I thought I was uh, cornering the queen after B4, queen takes C4. I think, she, I mean, I don't know if she should have played this because I don't see a defense here, but uh, in the game, queen A7 felt too passive anyway. Um, so she probably has to take, take. My point is, I always can take this bishop, but I don't take it immediately because uh, then she gets knight e6. And no, she doesn't. So like, uh, calculated all sorts of lines. So if she goes queen b2, then knight f4. Um, if rook e8, my point was queen c3. Queen takes, pawn takes. 96, 90. Yeah, it's just let me get it for you. Yeah. Knight and takes, pawn takes. And then you take on a6. Yeah. Yeah. And same goes after pawn takes f6. If she goes 98, now it's very important that she couldn't get knight d6. And I still have this shot. Because of the back rank. Yeah. Um, and after queen a7, here, I mean, I think this should be winning, but. Uh, e6 felt much simpler. So pawn takes, queen takes, hook e8 is very good try. And do you have knight b5? Then queen b8 perhaps. Um, Maybe you can go knight b5. We should be five. Oh yeah. yes. No, no. Uh, I wanted. Uh, I think c5 here. I think this should be winning. But then I also got scared of f6 because if queen c5, I suddenly probably lose after queen b8. Knight. And my knight is pinned because of queen g3. Queen g3 check. Yeah. So f6, then I thought probably queen e3, but then I don't know, maybe rook d8 again. It didn't feel that clear to me. But um, it's probably, you know, something that should be calculated until the end, and it should be a win at the end. But I couldn't solve it after 10 minutes, and I felt time trouble coming, so I, I thought I'll go e6. Here I thought she should take, take rook f8. I mean, she cannot allow rook f7. And here my plan was king g2. And my point is, <laughs> she can never go queen b6. I mean, she can, but... No, rook f7 is probably very strong, so she cannot draw. Okay, f1 right. would be uh, far too dangerous. Take, take, king f7, rook f1. 
Well, there's two options. And king g8, you can just take on e7 exactly. anyway. Exactly. Yeah, so mm -hmm. let's put that line. She, I mean, she, nice. she cannot take on d4 because of mate, but if she doesn't, there's knight e6. That's going to win. And yeah, here. this is beautiful. And just mate. Yeah. So, um, and king e8. Um, I mean, I assume there's a forcing win, like maybe rook e1 is good, but there's also this option that should be technically winning because she has to go knight d8 then I get something like queen c7 yeah and the knight and the rook are very badly placed yeah yeah so she can do exactly the same with rook c8 uh, but again I assumed there's gonna be a win somewhere so I mean after rook f7 the same line except I get queen takes a7 knight d8 so it's a bit of a better version um, also, that so like knight on g. Ima imagine this position with the queen on a7 and the rook on c8 because I'm lazy. <laughs> but um, yeah, something like h4, h5 along the line. Like you get two weaknesses: one on the king side, the other one is if the pawn on b7 falls, then uh, white is winning. So I assume that's winning. But um, uh, still, it should have been tried because after f6, g5, it's. Uh, I thought this was the only reasonable attempt, but. Uh, I mean, this also looks very bad. It all looks very bad. And uh, here, I don't know, King H1 was not very precise. But, um, yeah, maybe I should go immediately for the end game, Knight F5. This maybe is uh, by far the easiest. But um, for some reason, I. You're probably going to win the F6 pawn. Yeah, yeah, for some reason, I was like, uh, I, I have to mate in this position, so. So it's what I did. So king h1, king h8, rook c1. I think it's always useful. I think we're going to have to have you move a little bit so that the... Yeah, yes. Yeah. And... Yeah, so knight h5 was not very good. Because but things, have, things are already looking very bad for black here. Yeah, yeah, because every end game is bad, so... With the spawn on e6. Yeah, so... But uh, this, after rook c7, it's over because queen d1, king h2. And if you go on g8, it's, uh, you know, you s it looks like you have counter play now, but uh, white is first. h4, king g7, queen f6, queen h4, and... Rook f7? Yeah. Or rook g5 is also mate. Yeah. Um, so, and here, yeah, she resigned because after rook takes, they queen g8, queen g7. It's so an important move, you can pull f4. If rook d7, you actually play queen b8 because queen d7 could be a draw. I'm not sure. Always better to mate yeah. when you can. And f5, queen e5. All right, nice. Yeah, so this is a, a nice way to start the tournament. Yeah, and a nice way to warm up. I mean, <laughs> definitely a difficult game. I have to ask you now, last night after the opening ceremony, we saw you at the bar for a long time. Did you actually prepare for today's game? Did you manage to get mm -hmm. any prep in or was it about resting? Uh, well, I mean, it was um, a fun night, <laughs> fun evening at the bar, I mean, but uh, I didn't uh, overstep my sleeping schedule at all. So despite having some fun, you make sure that the, that part doesn't get compromised? Clearly not. Well, still a long tournament to go, so we hope you stay on track and we look forward to having you back in our studio. Yeah, thank you, Tanya. Thank you, Maxime.